Good afternoon. This webinar offers closed captioning. To enable closed captioning, click on the live transcript button on the bottom of your screen and choose your preferred method. Welcome to the City of Chicago Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection webinar. We have adapted our regular business education workshops at City Hall and City's webinars until further notice. Please note any website or email that I mentioned will be posted in the chat box. For those seeking business license assistance, we strongly encourage the process of license and permits online. Please visit chicagobusinessdirect.org or you can call 312-74-GO-BIZ. If you are a part of the BACP Entrepreneur Certificate Program, you can get credit for joining this webinar by sending an email to bacpoutreach at cityofchicago.org. To learn more about this program, please visit chicago.gov forward slash business education. Also, this webinar is being recorded and will be available at youtube.com forward slash Chicago BACP. We would like to encourage all of our attendees to ask questions. Please use the chat box and send your questions to all panelists. There will be a Q&A session at the end of this presentation. Please note that the views, information, and opinions expressed during this webinar are solely those of the presenter and do not necessarily represent the official policy and positions of the Department of BACP. At this time, I will now turn this webinar over to Ms. Kenya Merrick for us to begin. Thank you so much, Stella, um, for that warm introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our Black History Month panel. We have an amazing lineup for you today. We have a lot to pack within this hour, but we wanna be sure to leave enough time at the end to answer any questions that you may have from our illustrious panelists. But first, we're gonna just provide a brief overview of each of our panelists and then dive right into the conversation. So we have Eric Williams, who's joining us, who is the CEO of The Silver Room. If you have not been on 53rd Street and grabbed some gear, checked out the vibes, attended a talk, heard like a DJ in that space, you are not living your best life in Chicago. And so we are super thrilled to have Mr. Eric Williams joining us today. He is expanding his venture into a winery that will be located in Bronzeville. And so we're super enthused to hear about his journey of starting the Silver Room, which actually started on the north side and is now located on the south side to expanding into this winery. Um, so please welcome Eric Williams virtual hand round of applause for Eric. Next, we have Taylor Mason. Um, and Taylor has generated a cult following um, for Taylor's Tacos. This woman has done an amazing job with um, developing your untraditional tacos that are so flavorful and so amazing. Um, she's currently located in the hatchery on the west side. Um, but again, she's doing amazing things that have done um, an incredible job with expanding um, in spite of the pandemic um, and we'll be opening up this cool innovative space in Pilsen called Taylor. Um, and so if you have not had Taylor tacos, again, you are not living your best life in Chicago. And so we're super excited to hear Taylor talk a little bit about her journey um, and ways that she's expanding um, her footprint into Pilsen. So we'll go ahead and we'll dive into the conversation. As Stella mentioned at the top of our webinar, if you guys have um, any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat um, and we'll get to them at the end of our presentation. Once we're done with our conversation with Eric and Taylor, we're gonna let them go um, because then we have more surprises for you. We are super lucky to have our cousins from the World Business Chicago, LaForce Baker and Adam Scheimer, joining us to talk about some really cool initiatives that are happening within their organization and across the city. So you don't wanna hop off after our panel conversation with Eric and Taylor, you wanna stick around and hear what they have to say. And then we'll have Judy Tolan, who is a powerhouse um, leading the charge at Meta to share some tools and resources that will be sure to help your business um, leverage Facebook and Instagram as an amazing marketing tool. So let's dive into the conversation with Eric and Taylor. Um, and we'll start with you, um, Taylor. And Stella, if we can actually take down um, the slides, I think we know how Taylor and Maya, that's um, Taylor's partner, my beautiful Maya, um, mm -hmm. and we have Eric here with us. So I'd love to have us just a towel so people can actually see their faces. So if we could take down the slides and just have the towel of our faces, that would be great. Um, so we'll start with you, Taylor. 
Um, both you and Maya are the owners of Taylor Tacos, which has generated, again, a cult-like following. Can you tell us a little bit about what was the driving force for starting this business? Man, so my story is is life. I went to Whitney Young High School, go Dolphins, and it was always my dream to go to California, to get to California in some way. I remember my parents took me to go visit Stanford, and then I realized that it was in Northern California, and I was like, oh no, 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 no. We need to get to, to the Los Angeles area. That's where I'm supposed to be. I can feel it. I, I emit it. Let's, let's do this, and so kind of took the scenic route of school. I went to junior college my freshman year because of I was a basketball basketball player. And I ended up getting a scholarship. I was supposed to go to Howard, long story with that, but I ended up getting a scholarship to Pepperdine University. And as soon as I rode under the bridge in Malibu, I'm like, this is it. Like, I'm here. I made it. I'm going to start my life. I'm trying to be Oprah and Ellen's love child. I'm taking telecommunications. Like, I'm living the dream, right? And so my senior year of college, everything was on track. I had my, my job lined up. I just had to graduate. And just before graduation, my mother had back-to-back -back brain aneurysm. And that was the scariest thing ever. And this is uh, about 10 years ago. I'm getting up there. It's a little, a little scary, scary now, but I had to make the super easy but toughest decision ever to come back to Chicago and help my family while my mother was nursed back to health. So after graduation, packed up my bags, came back here to freeze my butt off and I had to figure out, you know, what kind of what to do. Once my mother was nursed back to health, she's doing phenomenally well now. Um, but once she was nursed back to health, I'm like, okay, I'm back here. What am I supposed to do? I was missing those California tacos. I love the art of like the street cooking and just kind of creating that, that, that love. Like you're just, the food's coming hot off the grill and you can just taste the love that it's cooked with. And you just, I just loved how food brought people together. You tell somebody you're cooking, it's not going to be hard to get them to come, to come by and come hang with you, you know? And so... I kind of I had to figure out a way that I could kind of put all of those things together and make some money while doing it. And there was a little taco man over in Wicker Park and he had the most inconsistent hours ever. And so I think it was like the third or fourth time we rode up there and he wasn't there. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna make these tacos myself. And I think I can make them better because I'm gonna put some soul flavor on an authentic street style taco. And that's what we did. We got the extra juicy chicken. We got the savory steak. We got the awesome AF asparagus that makes the people go crazy. So we're doing it and we found a way to, to do it well. I am salivating. I have not had lunch yet. And you have just <laughs> went through like your menu. Like Oh man. This Just panel conversation should have came with like lunch. <laughs> oh yeah, next time we got to do the kit with it. For sure. Thank you for that. Um, such an amazing way to start um, your journey. Um, and Eric, you're the owner of Silver Room, um, very popular retail, cultural, and community space, more than just the store, but the community space um, in Hyde Park. Um, your latest venture is the Bronzeville Winery. Tell us why you felt the need to open a winery and why would you do it on the South side? <laughs> well, first of all, thank you, Kenya. I just want to give you a shout out because you've been always, it's a great resource. You're super responsive and you know, you know what's happening in the city. So thank you for, for all you do. So, um, wow. So Silver Room started on the North side, uh, in Wicker Park in 97 and I moved to High Park about seven years ago. And I think it, 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 um, it kind of sparked something in me even more so than to the north side, but just this, this general idea that there's not a lot of stuff on the south side <laughs> that people don't want to have to go to the north side. You know what I mean? So we're three times busier in Hyde Park. And I'm like, oh, wow, this makes sense. These people out here don't want to have to travel to the north side. So when I moved to, uh, I moved from Wicker Park down to, to Bronzeville, I like to go out and eat. You know, I'm in West Loop all the time and Fulton Market and the north side and Edgewater. I'm like, I think we just naturally just think when we want something to go to eat that's nicer and more diverse, we just go to the north side. It's just in us now. We don't even, we just take it for granted. Oh, I'm going to the north side. It's like a vacation, you know? Um, and so I got sick of that. I'm like, why am I always going to the north side? I want something in my neighborhood. And also being on the south side, I, people who, who, I was, who I knew, I'm like, where do you live? I live on 41st and this. I live on 39th and this. I live on 47th and this, you know? I'm like, everyone lives in Bronzeville but we're continually going to the north side. So it just made sense to me to, to build a quality space that you would get in Fulton Market, you would get downtown, was building on Cottage Cottage Grove. So um, that was the idea behind it. 
Yeah, I, I love that each of you all, um, in terms of when you're thinking about space, you're thinking about spaces that may have, you know, not conventional spaces, but neighborhoods and communities where people haven't traditionally looked um, to have their businesses. And so when we think about quality of life for residents that live on the South and the West side, um, having access to Taylor's Tacos, having access to be able to sit down um, and have a great meal and a glass of wine to accompany it, um, to be able to go to a store and to find um, makers from all over the city. Um, those are things that I can say I appreciate for you guys making um, accessible um, for our community. So thank you for um, being pioneers in a lot of ways and the work that you're doing. Um, so you guys are, are doing this um, in the middle of a pandemic. So Taylor, like you're opening up this new space, like in a pandemic, like Eric, you're opening a winery in a pandemic. Um, one of the things that has been interesting in terms of the data that we're seeing here at BACP is the growth of new businesses, particularly black owned businesses. And so black folks, we know are resilient. Can you guys share with us a little bit of the rationale around why you decided to expand um, in the midst of a pandemic? We'll start with you, Taylor. I can definitely happen. Um, I mean, January of 2020, we were working towards getting our own restaurant space. We were heavily in that. We had kind of, we had really only officially launched in 2018. And I say officially as when we, we were legalized, we had all our correct paperwork. We were cooking out of our catering kitchen. We were doing everything we were supposed to be doing. And two years, we, we were doing well, like surprisingly. It's like two hours surprise, I should say. And then the pandemic happened. And that was the scariest time of my business life because being a caterer, it's all about events. It's all about people coming out, coming together in person, face to face, like we were doomed. We lost over 95% of our business. And I, I was like, I told my partner, like, I, we're not gonna make it. I, I'm gonna have to, if I get one more call, one more cancellation, it's over with this curtains. And we had to figure out what we were going to do next. And so of course, I think that resiliency comes just from me being an anomaly in myself. I'm a black female lesbian taco maker. I mean, I'm just a walking crazy if you really think about me, but that's kind of who I've been and that's, I'm gonna stick with it and own it. And we had to figure it out. And then once we did figure it out and we constantly pivoted to what the people needed during this time, we realized not only do we, we, we have support and then kind of with all the social injustices and people kind of realizing that racism existed all of a sudden, just all of the support that they were starting to give black businesses, because that's all we were really missing was the capital. Uh, for the most part, we had the idea, we had the drive, we had the, it was the, the kind of the culture and the generation passed down of not having the, all of the knowledge that was needed to be able to be as successful as some of our counterparts. And so I think that that has definitely propelled us in the in the pandemic. But now I don't even I can't even call it the pandemic. It's just it's the new normal. I have to change, change your mind, change your life. And so that's what we've been trying to do. And th that's where we are. And that's why I think we, we've been as successful, successful as we've been. Thank you, uh, Eric. Sorry. Talk a little bit about why you decided to expand during the pandemic. Oh, sure. Uh, I actually started this before the pandemic. The, the idea came to me before the pandemic. And, you know, unfortunately, this little thing happened, which is now two weeks. It's now two years later. Um, it really just kind of stemmed from the customer base at the Silver Room. You know, it's been you know, 25 years. We have tens of thousands of people. And I talk to a lot of these people. And they're, you know, solidly middle class folks, you know, working class folks who just want to have a good time. And so I, the thought was really, I've been doing this thing in retail, which is, you know, these, these tangible items, but then what's the next iteration of that is what happens after you buy something at the Silver Room, you can go have a drink and have something to eat. So that was this natural thought for me. Um, and also, you know, the pandemic, but also we have to talk about what happened with, with George Floyd and the reaction to George Floyd. That played a huge part in, in, in my business. Uh, we were closed for almost four months and people were concerned they were reaching out are you okay you know and it was just uh it was it was an outpouring of, of love from the community who wanted to make sure we were okay and when we reopened it was an uh intentionality behind people were shopping 
they were like, I'm coming to buy something. They, were, they didn't want to buy anything. I'm going to buy something because they wanted to make sure we were good. You know, so I think that was really a testimony to, a testament to the 25 years that we've had and people understanding that this is more than just a retail store and understanding the connection between retail, you know, commerce and planning, urban planning mm -hmm. and how that affects the community. You know, there are, you know, you don't want empty storefronts on your block, you know? So people understand I have to shop here to make sure that these, these businesses are here. You know, and also I think about, you know, when I started, you know, 25 years ago in Wicker Park, what Milwaukee Avenue looked like in, in some ways is not that much different than Cottage Grove to me. You know, it was a, a fear. My, the first space I had, I was paying $800 a month. They had been empty for six months on Milwaukee Avenue because no one wanted to rent it. You know, and I saw that change over the, you know, the next 15, 16, 17, 18 years. And, and my hope is that we see commercial corridors like a cottage road that it just takes a small wheel to turn up a larger wheel. You know, then there's just this wine bar that's here. That's cool. Then somebody else is inspired to do something. Now there's things that are happening. So for me, it's, it's about my business for sure. But also, I think more importantly, it's about the long term effect of these things happening and people live in the community, seeing these things happen and having a belief that they're possible. Look, I love that both of you all, um, in a lot of ways, are mission driven in your work, that you're focused on um, community, you're also focused on um, supporting um, other entrepreneurs like yourself, that um, you don't see other entrepreneurs as competition, you see um, them as collaborators. And so I appreciate you guys being great examples of that. Um, one of the things that I think I've noticed um, about each of you all is how you find ways to ensure that as an individual um, entrepreneur that you're pouring back into yourself in terms of professional development. Um, it feels like Taylor, every time I look up, like Taylor is like the poster child for a program associated with professional development. Um, and Eric, I know that you've even left the city for a little bit to, to explore just professional development and how you build yourself up as an entrepreneur. Can you guys talk a little bit about the value of making sure that, that you are staying informed and gaining knowledge um, and increasing your skill set individually and how that plays into the success of your business? And so Taylor, we'll start with you. Totally. I mean, you don't know what you don't know. And so it's been my goal to know as much as I can because I want to be as successful as possible in my business. I mean, my, my driving force is first, I want to want to protect my family and have a family and, you know, create a legacy. And I want to have an exit strategy, which I never would have even known what that was unless I was in these classes and cohorts and everything that is now available to me that wasn't available to me before. Um, I've learned so much as far as so, like the programming and like how much just how much there is out, out there for small businesses to grow. But unfortunately, I strongly do feel that I never would have known that if it wasn't this driving force behind the shift in the world, just socially, as well as just like technologically, because like now even these these webinars like I don't know if you guys are doing these prior to 2020 I couldn't tell you but I know that now I know about all of the webinars that you guys are doing and so just to be able to tap into that it still is also the willpower behind I mean obviously for me but whoever wants to be successful you're going to have to have that kind of you know that that it factor of you want to get the work done but when you when you couple that with now the resources that are available I mean the the sky's the limit Eric? I mean, for me, you know, I, I, you know, my business is a reflection of, of me, right? So I have to think about all the influences that I'm interested in to pour into myself, to pour into how I curate the space, you know? And so it's intersection of business. I'm, you know, I'm reading all the business rags and, you know, Bloomberg TV, but it's also fashion. So I'm reading Vogue and, you know, and travel and, you know, in sports, I mean, you name it, you know, I have to take in everything, you know, and, and, and from that, I can say, okay, cool, I'm going to buy this, this t shirt, because this has a meaning to me, actually, and maybe somebody will get it. Or we're going to create this candle line. Uh, that's really about the south side, because that's old to to our community, you know, what I mean, so, so everything I think, stems from the owner. Um, and the only way you can differentiate yourself as a, as a business is to be a reflection of yourself. Because there's a million stores, you know, there's a million restaurants, but how is it different? 
you know, man, I don't even eat, eat meat, but I'm about to go try one of your tacos, you know, because it's a reflection of who you are, you know, and your story is interesting. So that, that's different, you know? So you have to always constantly think about how you can pour into yourself, especially now, I, I, you know, the store is 25 years old, you know? So, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not the age I was when I first opened the store. So how does that look differently as a person who is, you know, 52 as opposed to 27? And so I think you have to think about like, as an individual, what that means and, 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 and how you pour into yourself constantly. Love that, love that. I think a lot of times we forget about that, right? Like, or entrepreneurs tend to forget about that, like so focused. And I know that like, it's, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of time focused on the actual business. Um, and sometimes the individual person gets lost in the process. And so I just wanted you guys to share about how you're doing that and how important it is for the success of your business. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, the question that we get all the time is access to capital. So I have to ask it, guys. Um, how did you get started? Talk about your journey with accessing capital, um, with either starting or even trying to, to expand your business. Um, Taylor? I mean, the biggest thing for me has been, I mean, outside of grants that we've been able to get it's making sure that your credit is together or at least making sure that you have something to show, but it's kind of like the chicken or the egg. Like if you don't have, if, you, if you're trying to start something, you don't have it to show, but doing all of your, like just preparing, as long as you're prepared, when the, when the door, when they knock on the door and you can open it and have everything that you need, that's half the battle. So making sure that you, if you're an LLC or a partnership or whatever you are, making sure that you have all of that filed, making sure that you're, you're in good standing with the city of Chicago and making sure that you, you know, like you, you have just, you have everything that you need. That's the first step. Um, after that, go Google. <laughs> Google is your best friend <laughs> and find out what is in your area that you can learn from. Like I learned it like, like allies for community business. I mean, obviously being at the hatchery, the hatchery is an incubator kitchen space that, that holds 56 private kitchens has the shared kitchen space. And I, I, I live, I'm born and raised and I live on the West side of Chicago. And I wouldn't have known, I don't think I would have known about it if I wasn't just so happen to be driving down Kedzie and can't miss it because it sticks out on, on that street. Um, and so learning about all of the programming and going in there, that's how I even got into the hatchery. And then I found out that there was a pitch competition for $10,000 to be able to, to move in there. And this was back in 20, at the end of like 2017 or I'm sorry, 2018. And you know, that's how I even really got my start. We wouldn't have been as successful as we are today if I wouldn't have been in the hat, if we had, wouldn't have gotten into the hatchery. So just learning as much as you can about the programs that even your neighborhood offers and the city of Chicago, because they really are here to help you. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Taylor. Eric? Uh, financing. Uh, yes, it's important. <laughs> Uh, it is very different now than it was for me, you know, 20 some years ago. I mean, I started yeah. the store with, I mean, I had like, I think I had $5,000, literally, like it's all I had, you know, but that was, you know, mid nineties, you know, you, you can't do that now. You know, I, I kind of bootstrapped it and you sell two pair of sunglasses, you go buy four, then you go buy eight, go buy, you know, that's kind of how I did it back then. You know, for this newest project, I mean, it's a, it's a lot of money. You know, and we were, you know, trying to figure out how to get financing and, you know, and, you know, we had the NOF grant and it's still it's a very complicated process if you don't understand it. And you know, we actually had someone who consulted with us, uh, who was a director at a, at a major bank, who knew how to, to, to you know, create the, you know, the, the decks and, you know, all the models that the language that banks want to see outside of something that, that I know how to do. And so I was lucky to have this person help us because if, if we didn't have him, it, it might not have happened, to be honest with you. So it's how can you be in close proximity to people who understand these systems of, of banking, uh, the systems of, of lending? And I think for a lot of us, we just that's that's not where we where we landed, you know. Um, so I think that's the thing that we need to think about is like banks who say they want to lend, institutions who say they want to support black and brown folks, you know, like how do we actually get money into the day, you know? And that's that's that that's something I'm passionate about right now is trying to figure out how I can be a part of the conversation because. That's what it comes down to. Like it's a business. I mean, silver was great, but I got to make money to keep it going. You know, so. Um, last question. And so, to our attendees, if you guys have questions, 
um, for Taylor and for Eric. Please make sure that you're dropping them in the chat now um, because we will get to them um, shortly. Last question for you guys. What do you do to unwind? Like what's your fave Netflix binge show? What are you reading? Uh, we talked about pouring back into yourself. Um, being an entrepreneur can be exhausting. Um, so what are some of the things that you guys do um, to unwind? Taylor? You know, I'm working on that. <laughs> I'm, actually, <laughs> I'm actually a part of the Goldman Sachs. So I, when I first learned about Goldman Sachs, I first I didn't even qualify to make enough money to even apply. Then the next year, once I knew I like I qualified, I didn't get in. And then finally I've just gotten into this cohort. And it is the hardest thing I think I've done since I played college basketball. And but I feel myself literally being uncomfortable and growing and getting better every day. And we actually had a class today about being a leader and what you can do and kind of measure on your own to be the best that you can in order so that you can lead whoever, you know, your training or your employees or what have you. And I, I'm working on that. Um, <laughs> what, I, what I need, what I'm learning I need to do is for my own self, self, self care is I have to learn how to be more empathetic. <laughs> That's something that I'm working on. Um, and I have to uh, be a better listener overall. And that's going to help me to be, to unwind and get, <laughs> and kind of take it all in. I can have some time <laughs> for myself to be able to do that. So that's what I'm working on right now. Taylor is working on it. Thank I'm you. I'm working on it. This is working on it. Um, Eric, what are, you, what are you doing to relax? Unwind. Uh, okay. uh, sorry, I, I'm getting messages that you can't hear me. So I'm sorry if I wasn't speaking loud enough. Uh, apologize. To unwind, uh, I love to travel is probably number one. I try and get away as much as I can, whenever I can. Uh, reading is definitely right there. Uh, and yoga, I mean, trying to get my little down with dogs on, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> <laughs> love it, I love it. I'm, I'm stiff, but I, 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 love, I love yoga for sure, so. Love it, thank you guys for that. Um, and before we head to the questions, one last question. How can we support you guys? Taylor, where can we find your tacos? What are the ways that we can support you? Yeah, so first, so Taylor's Tacos is a pop-up on-site live service catering company that specializes in authentic street style tacos with a whole lot of soul. So you're going to get the goodness when you come to Taylor's Tacos. We are all about creating like beautiful experience, intentional experiences through interaction, connection, and quality ingredients. So you have to do yourself a flavor and eat with Taylor's Tacos. So our catering kitchen is located on Kedzie and Lake, 135 North Kedzie. You can go on our website, taylorstacoschicago.com, or follow us on Instagram if you're, if that's that's your jam. Um, and you can kind of find out, that's where you can get catering. You can order with us as long as it's at least a day in advance. We would love longer, but we need at least 24 hours. We can get you a taco tray. We can come to an event, a party, you name it. But we, we also, at the beginning of March, are opening our own event style space because in tandem, we are doing a nonprofit called Tacos Create Community because we are all about bringing this experience to people who don't get it. Um, especially, like I said, I'm born and raised on the West Side. It is a food desert. You can't get nothing but mild sauce and fries after any time of the day. And so we're trying to bring that street gourmet deliciousness to the people and or they can come to us and have that great experience. So Taylor will be offering a lot of different events. Taylor's Tacos will be popping up there a few times a week. You're looking for something fun to do. We're giving, you're gonna put your phone down, you're gonna come in and you're gonna connect with somebody. So that's what Taylor's Tacos is all about. So please follow us on the gram, go to our website and you're gonna have a good time with us always. It's super exciting. Um, looking forward to the opening of Tailored. Um, so guys, make sure you're following them on Insta. I follow them on Insta and like, I'm probably like the number one person that's looking at your stories because I'm like salivating over all of the tacos. Like guys, she's really good at showing the food every single day. Um, so make sure that you're following her um, and you can get more information about um, where she's popping up at. Um, and most importantly, when you can get in at Tailored. Um, and help support her biz. Um, and Eric, you are like 
the man. We know that Civil Room is open every single day of the week, but tell us a little bit more about when we anticipate the opening of the winery. Sure, sure. Uh, Civil Room in North High Park, 1506 53rd Street. Uh, Thesilverroom.com, you can shop online. You know, we have a, I think it's a really good website to buy all kinds of stuff. Uh, Bronzeville Winery, 4420 South Cottage Grove. We are in our licensing process. We should be opening end of March, is looking like, looking pretty good. Um, full service menu, we have an excellent song. Uh, chef is dope. I mean, music, I mean, it's gonna be like a spot to be. So it's, just think Silver Room, but think Silver Room, but with food and wine. And that's kind of how I, I'm, I'm approaching it, you know? Um, yeah, so that should be coming soon. Awesome. So super excited about having a glass of wine and then making my way over to Pilsen to have some tacos or either way. Um, Silver Room first. Silver Room first. Then Silver Room. <laughs> Silver no, no, no. You go to Taylor Tacos first, you get the app, and then you can end your night because we're, you know, it's, we're not a late night spot. You, you're going to be a late night spot. We're going to be the king, the queens and kings of the day party of the of the day jam. I am here That'll for all of it. I, and I'm going to swing by Silver Room to get a West Side is the best side hoodie and sweatshirt. Um, and then make sure that I grab me some tacos and then grab some wine. So um, folks, be on the lookout. You will see uh, me, LaForce and Adam and the rest of the team traveling around Chicago, um, posting amazing eats from Taylor, amazing gear from the Silver Room and drinking amazing wine after all of that shopping. Um, at the winery. Um, and I know that we were going to try and get to some questions, but I know that we're super tight on time, but I want to give a great big thank you to Eric for joining us on his birthday. Happy birthday, Eric. Hopefully you have some um, great plans this evening to celebrate. You are an amazing um, asset to us here in Chicago and an icon um, that we look up to um, so thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. And Taylor, we are so honored that you would also take time out. I know that you're extremely busy. Again, I follow you on Insta. So I know that you are like putting in the work as well as opening up this new space. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining us for our Black History Month panel. You guys are the epitome of Black entrepreneurship. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you guys. Um, and so now we're going to pivot to our friends at World Business Chicago. We're excited to have um, LaForce as well as Adam um, Scheimer to join us to talk to us about some cool initiatives um, and projects that are happening at World Business Chicago to support our small business owners and most importantly to support our communities and our neighborhoods. After we hear from them, we're super excited. Um, to learn new ways around how we can leverage Meta as a marketing tool for our small business owners. So we're happy to have the powerhouse Judith Top to Tolan um, joining us. And so she'll do a presentation um, immediately after LaForce and Adam. So I'm going to pivot over to you guys and you can get us started. All right. Thank you so much, Kenya. And again, uh, to both uh, Eric as well as Taylor, I know they're not here anymore, but uh, just super motivated and inspired by their stories. I mean, I, I think when we hear stories like that, I think we all can agree that, um, you know, it just inspires us to go after our passions. And I think, you know, they've both shown that going after whatever you're passionate about, that leads to success. Um, so I'm gonna, let's see, I'm gonna pull up a couple of slides here because I'm a very visual person and a lot of other folks are too, hold on. Perfect, can you all see my screen? Perfect. Okay. So uh, first off, just real quick background on me um, and what we're doing at World Business Chicago. Um, so I'm Vice President of Community Impact at World Business Chicago. For those that don't know, World Business Chicago is essentially the economic development arm for the city of Chicago. So we bring businesses to the city. Typically, those businesses are brought to the downtown area. So think about the Amazons or the metas of the world that uh, Judith is here to represent. Uh, but we focus on bringing businesses to the neighborhoods and bringing opportunity to the neighborhoods. So think about grocery stores, places like Bronzeville Winery, um, expanding operations, uh, you know, like we talked about today, um, you know, everything from food trucks to, uh, you know, laundry mats, just basic amenities. And so, you know, we're focused on what we call at scale business development, bringing those larger businesses, bringing businesses like maybe uh, Eric's business who he had an amazing location right with the silver room 
Now he's opening up this second location with Bronzeville Winery. So helping to expand those types of businesses and then of course, bringing the, the large chains. Uh, one of the things that we heard from uh, a lot of black and brown businesses was that, you know, we can't get no money. You know, like we have amazing products. We have amazing services, like some that we just heard about today. But when we go to a bank, like the banks that we all use from JP Morgan Chase to Bank of America, any of the typical banks, they can't get meaningful loans. They might get, you know, $5,000 in a pitch competition, $10,000 here, but that's not enough to really hire another person so that you're not working in the day-to-day -day of your business. And so uh, we had the idea that we want to address this issue. And one of the ways that we're addressing this issue is with something we're calling the Black and Latino um, Excellence Investment Summit. So this is going to be on June 16th. And this event is not really targeted towards startups. So I do want to throw that out there. And that's just because there's a lot of stuff right now that's going into helping startup uh, Black and Brown businesses. But this is really for businesses that have been around at least three years, have um, at least 250K in revenue, uh, and they may be looking to build maybe their second location. Um, that's what this targeted towards because um, those businesses really have a hard time um, growing because they can't get access to capital. I'm not going to do that. So, you know, this kind of event is targeted towards businesses that are going to be on the south or west side of the city. Um, if they might have a north, lot, north side location, kind of like how Eric's was, and then they're saying, hey, I want to expand to the south side, they will be a prime business. This could be a business that's already existing on the south side, and they're like, hey, I want to open up another location. So, you know, we're already doing that with a handful of businesses. Like, we, we've worked with um, Stephanie Hart of Brown Sugar Bakery, if folks have heard about her. Amazing, amazing, you know, cupcakes, if you all love some red velvet cupcakes, by the way. Uh, but, you know, we're working with her. We're working with a handful of other entrepreneurs to do that. And so our goal with this event is that, you know, out of all the businesses that are kind of pre-screened, that they walk away with a meaningful amount of capital. And when we, when we say that, we mean that these businesses are walking away with at least 25 grand from either investors, banks, or philanthropy. And so the nice thing is we will be... Um, kind of matching these businesses with technical assistance because kind of to uh, Eric's point a while back, a lot of businesses don't know how to get access to the, to the money. Like I saw in the chat, people are like, how do you get access? How do you get your, you know, your, your first check? Um, and so we're matching businesses with technical assistance partners to help them to, you know, put together the loan application, put together the presentation deck and put it together in a language that bank officers and underwriters can understand so that at this event that we have on June 16th, someone actually walks away with a check. And so, you know, we're really excited about um, this event. And, you know, we want this to be something that really helps uh, the businesses that, that participate and address this access to capital issue. This is really, really meaningful to me. And I'm going to hand this off to Adam. Because for me, I actually was a business owner before coming to World Business Chicago. I was very fortunate, grew and scaled that business to hundreds of locations across the Midwest in the food space through grocery retailers like Whole Foods and, and places like that, Joel Osco. Um, and one of the issues that I had was I could not get access to capital. I was bringing so much money to banks like JP Morgan Chase in terms of my revenues and my business, but I, they would only give me a loan of like $5,000 in terms of a business credit card. And that is not enough to like really grow and scale your business. And so, you know, this is very, very personal for me. It's very, very personal for our team. We want to make sure that Black businesses not only just survive, but thrive. Adam, you want to go into the final details and the timeline? Yeah, I'm happy to. And hi, everyone. Really happy to be here. I'm the director on the forces team at World Business Chicago. Um, so we just wanted to run through some of the details of the event just to give you an idea of how we're organizing this investment summit. And this is the inaugural one, but it's not going to be the last one. So, you know, we hope many of the business owners on this line will be able to join in future years to be part of this. Um, investment summit. So right now, the first phase is we're um, in taking the small businesses that we'll be working with. So um, we're matching those businesses um, based on um, the information they have, you know, the financial documents, credit scores, business plans, um, bids and contracts and things of that nature to assess if this summit is a good fit for them because we don't want to waste anyone's time, right? We want to make sure that businesses who are intaking into this event um, are the right fit to ultimately secure a loan 
by the June 16th summit. Um, so once we have the business, um, business pipeline built out, um, we will then be connecting those businesses to technical assistance partners. This is a mix of pro bono technical assistance partners from banks, CDFIs from the city of Chicago, and they'll be having one-on-one -on -one sessions with each of those businesses to help develop their pitch skills, capital plans, financial documents, and basically fill any of those gaps that's keeping those banks from being, you know, quote unquote, bankable from the perspective of a lender. Um, so that'll be about a month long process. And then in May, that's when the pitching starts. So we will then be connecting those businesses to our lending partners, um, which is, a, again, a mix of banks, CDFIs, um, and angel investors um, to make their pitch. And then the goal, again, is that we're telling these lenders, you have to make that commitment pretty quickly, right? Because we want these businesses to be standing on a stage with the mayor on June 16th, celebrating this um, loan and ultimately, you know, forging the path for other businesses to follow suit moving forward. So it's about a three month timeline. Um, it's ambitious and we want it to be, you know, we want, we're hoping for as many loans as possible by June 16th, but the combination of businesses that are prepared, technical assistance advisors that are there to help, and then lenders that are committed um, to making those commitments by June 16th is how we're going to be creating a recipe um, to break down some of those barriers to capital through the course of this summit. Yeah, and um, I, I saw in the chat someone had a question: Is this for uh, nonprofits? Yeah, this is for for uh, profit businesses right now. Um, so, that, but not to say in the future we might not bring in um, you know other types of businesses, but for profit for now. Awesome. Well, LaForce and Adam, thank you guys so much. I'm super excited about um, the summit. Um, I think this is the first summit that you guys have done that's focused on food as well as um, the Black and Latinx community. So we want to make sure that our audience is aware of it. Um, we know that you guys are doing really great work um, to support our community. So um, make sure that um, our, our folks get that information in the chat and maybe they can follow you all um, on your social media platform at World Business Chicago to get um, additional information. But thank you guys so much for, for joining us today. Um, I know that we had a couple of questions um, in the chat. If you guys don't mind sticking around and if you can maybe answer a few um, that are related to the summit as well as some of the great work that you guys um, are sure. doing in terms of retention, um, a business attraction and retention strategy for our neighborhoods on the South and the West side. So we appreciate all of the great work that you all are doing. Um, and so now we have a few minutes for questions. Um, and Stella, did you want me to facilitate those questions or I can? my best um if you could facilitate them that works because it's a lot of them <laughs> okay <laughs> well that just means that all of our attendees um hopefully has have found this information helpful um that you guys have learned a little bit about um the entrepreneurial journeys um from both um taylor as well as eric you've learned about some um, initiatives and opportunities to, to get additional support and some of the work that World Business Chicago is doing. And most importantly, how to apply um, some of the um, things that Meta is doing to your businesses um, to hopefully um, get started or either grow. So I will, I will try to go through um, the chat and find some questions that I think um, we can try and get to in a very short period of time. Oh, someone asked a question about how can I get funding for my food truck business? That's a great question. Um, and so BACP has um, a little bit of information about how you can get started with your food truck um, business um, on our website, um, as well as what we call a one pager, which is just like, here are all of the steps needed to be able to open a food truck in Chicago. Um, and so Stella, I'm hoping you can go ahead and just drop um, a link to our website in the chat. In terms of capital, we do a lot of workshops around um, capital that's available either through the city, um, through our partners at the Department of Planning and Development. They have a um, neighborhood opportunity fund. There's also a current grant that's opening called the Re Chicago Recovery Grant. I believe the next application period is due on March 10th. And so they're looking for businesses that um, are looking to have a catalyt catalytic um, 
growth in terms of our neighborhoods. Um, and those are neighborhoods focused again on the south and the west side. And of course, East Garfield Park is on the west side. Um, so make sure that you check out that grant. It is called the Chicago Recovery Grant. And there are some opportunities there. Um, if you check out DPD's site, um, people are very grateful for the Meta Bulletin. Judy, you guys are like rocking out. Um, lots of praise for what's happening at World Business Chicago. Um, thank you so much. What I love here in our chat is the community. Um, and so Gina and Charlene and Tierra, like you guys are amazing. I think you guys should register for all of our workshops because you are sharing and dropping gems just based off your own experience. So thank you guys for doing that. Um, Reggio's Pizza, a Chicago iconic business. Judy um, would love to work with Elevate. Um, I believe your colleague um, has dropped a link so that people can get access to that. Um, Perfect. Yes, Brandy Pitts is in the chat and she's putting the uh, some of the links so that people can sign up for Meta Elevate. So thank you for all the questions. Oh, great. Just lots of like praise about um, the program. Um, and yeah, lots of information about how to get um, acclimated with Meta. So um, guys, thank you so much for your time. Um, we appreciate you all. Brandy, put your camera on. You've been helpful. Let us see the woman behind. Yes, that is the woman. <laughs> that's the woman behind the Elevate Success. So let's shout her out, please. Thank A round you. of applause um, <laughs> for Brandy and for Judy doing their thing at Meta to make sure that Black-owned businesses, um, as well as Brown-owned businesses here in Chicago, have tools and resources to, to grow and scale. So thank you guys so much for the hard work that you're doing um, at Meta to support our businesses here in Chicago. Um, and thank you again for sharing today as a part of our workshop. And again, my cousins um, up the street, LaForest and Adam, thank you guys for all of the great work that you're doing at World Business Chicago to support our neighborhoods as well. And audience, thank you guys for joining us. We had a lot packed into one hour. So hopefully you learned, you are inspired, and you can take this and grow and continue to be great. Thank you for joining us and be sure um, to follow us at Chicago BACP um, to learn a little bit more about additional workshops that we'll be doing for the remainder of the year. Thank you guys. Remember to support a Black-owned business not only this month, but all year, 365 days a year. Thank you guys. Have a good one. Thanks, everyone.